Hello, my name is David, and today I'm going to be reviewing chapter 14 of The Hunger Games. Now, you're probably asking yourself a question. Why is he looking up like that? Well, the reason why is because my TV is up there, so it's a little weird for me to keep looking at this little camera, you know, while my face is up here, you know. And the reason why I'm doing all this is because I hate editing, and um, this is easier. It's just weird looking at a camera. It's like it's judging me. Secretly wanting me to mess up. Anyway, sorry. Stop looking at me. Okay, so let's get into chapter 14. So this is the chapter that makes me understand that maybe the target audience for the Hunger Games isn't what I thought it was. Now, see, this is a very subjective view, and I, don't, I obviously don't think this is, like, right. You know, like, this is true. This is just my thoughts. You know, when I first thought, when I first read this, it seemed to me like the target audience was like a teenage audience, mainly, majority, mainly for females, but males too. Um, that seemed like the target simply because the Rome, not the Rome, the romance doesn't mean anything, but it's just like her immatureness towards romance that kind of made, you know, made it that way. Um, and kind of how the description of guys made it seem like it would be for little girls opposed to guys. I mean, if... A girl describes a guy and says ashy blonde hair. You would never see a guy go like, "Oh yeah, my friend, he has ashy blonde hair that waves over his face." Like, no guy would describe a guy like that. They would just say things like, you know, whatever. So that's kind of it, it's kind of funny because it makes sense why Suzanne Collins describes Glimmer as blonde and pretty and lean. Like, you know, a guy would not describe the girl that way. Um, so it's kind of interesting seeing that. Now, I don't think gender should matter when it comes to that, though. I, it's, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stop ranting now and get onto the goddamn review. All right. Um, so you need to brace yourself for this review because this, this chapter is some pretty gruesome shit. And this is what I was trying to get at. Um, the target audience seems to me to kind of shift in this chapter because it's really brutal what happens in this chapter. Not just the fact, the killing, but the crazy gory shit you know like i thought the movie could be rated pg-13 but now i'm starting to think if they show this scene like image to image there's no way it can be pg-13 it has to be rated r um maybe um and also i want to talk about how katniss in this chapter decides to actually kill now i know i was wondering whether or not katniss would be able to kill somebody but you know it takes a lot to me, and my, my morality pretty much says to me that you cannot kill anyone under any circumstances, that you shouldn't be taking a life. So the fact that she decided to kill seems kind of, like, surprising to me. And, you know, maybe someone thinks that killing's okay, but, you know, that's fine, you know, kill or be killed, whatever. But to me, it just takes a little bit more, maybe it's just how I was raised. So I'm not saying I'm right or anything, I, I just think that's very surprising to me that Katniss actually decided to kill. But hey, whatever. It's even more surprising if Peter actually killed that girl, that's, that's sad. That's even worse. Um, so anyway, let's talk about the first thing. Tracker jackers. Uh, this is a quick recap, and then I'll get into my thoughts about this or analyze it. Uh, so the tracker jackers are basically uh, mutant b uh, bees and wasps, if you will. And Rue is actually pointing at that and warning her, which is kind of cool. She's actually helping Katniss out, and I always wondered whether or not Rue would be hesitant on helping her because he doesn't know how Katniss feels about Rue you know there's no way Rue would be able to know that you know Katniss in her head's like oh an old you know a younger sister kind of thing but Rue may just see some crazy bitch you know so she may be intimidated by Katniss it's kind of cool that she helped her out I'm surprised by that um so and then uh Rue actually um Okay, well, before I get into that, um, it's kind of interesting. She was actually thinking maybe I can actually cut the wasp and make it land down and kill the career tributes below. And it kind of made me ask two questions. First question is why the hell are career tributes camping directly underneath uh, where Katniss is? Doesn't that seem kind of stupid? I mean, like, let's, I mean, they don't know what Katniss has. What if Katniss has some knives? I mean, she did have that one knife that that girl threw, and she should know about that. You know, she could throw it down at them. Kill one of them at least. I mean, hey, you know, whatever. But you'll kill one. So it's surprised that they would risk something like that if I were them. 
you know, logical, <laughs> you know. Uh, I would probably camp out a little further away where Katniss couldn't see, have one person kind of stake out and observe her from far away. That way they can kind of, you know, see what Katniss does, and it kind of discourages Katniss from starting to run because they don't know which direction, she doesn't know which direction they are, and they don't know if she's trapped. So it kind of messes with uh, psychologically. And not just kind of hiding, and not just sitting there in plain sight, you know. That's whatever. And I think I forgot to mention in the last chapter review is that Katniss is actually a little bit injured. She uh, has burns on her hands and she's got like a second degree burn. I'm not sure what the degree, but she has like a really intense burn on her leg, like a serious one. And that looks like it could be, it needs to be treated or else, you know, she can get infected, get sick and die. But and then her hands, whenever she climbed up the tree, must have really hurt too. So it's kind of discouraging her from like doing that because, you know, she would have to cut down the branch. So then she goes back to her whatever, to uh, her back to get her backpack to get some supplies to cut the branch, because she actually thinks she's thinking about risking it. She doesn't really know. And then um, she finds her first uh, sponsor gift, which is surprising. That it's surprising she actually gets like this uh, highly tech medical medicine, <laughs> medical medicine. Yes, that's what I just said. That makes sense. Trust me. Um, and it's really like a high tech ointment that's like made in this, uh, the district's, uh, the capital's scientific labs. So, and this is like crazy expensive. Like it was expensive just to drop water, but to drop this shows exactly how much the capital are, or how much they like her, you know, because now it's pretty much the theories out the window that there's no sponsors because that, that's more than a sponsor. That's gotta be a majority. So I really like that. Um, obviously she gained some people's respect when she shot that arrow through the apple at the game makers. Uh, so apparently the reason why she starts, uh, considering even more is cause you know, she's putting the ointment on her hands and let, and on that leg and it's like pretty much heals it instantly, not heals it. But it's like a pain reliever. So it kind of helps her a lot and it probably treats it too. And then she even, she sees that the wops are the, sorry, the tracker jackers are acting a little funny and it's because the smoke kind of sedates them and that was like what they used in the rebellion they, she does call them wasps okay so I can say wasps all right thank you um so that's actually kind of cool and it's funny that um basically Katniss is like all right well I gotta inform Rue that that that's what I'm gonna do so she does and then Rue goes away and uh you know whatever and this is the interesting thing and I Listen, I'm really not trying to be racist when I say this. Like, don't don't look at it like that. Um, Haru's basically like a monkey. Okay, she can hop from branch to branch like a ninja. More, it's more like a ninja, I'd say. The fact that she stalks people and is like really uh, fast and quiet. So yeah, ninja. She's more like a ninja. That's what I'd say. Um, it's kind of cool that she can actually jump from branch to branch. That's that's intense. I can't imagine doing that. I, I mean, I would never risk that. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That's exactly what she probably showed the game maker. She's probably playing lava in there. And uh, that's pretty cool. And, and this is the thing I wanted to ask. Would, would you guys risk um, going for the Tracker Jacker's Nest? And keep in mind, you know that they're kind of sedated. They're kind of out of it. But keep in mind, if these things sting you, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, they'll give you a pimple basically the size of an orange, and you'll start hallucinating things. And if you get stung by three or four of them, you're dead dead okay dead all right and not only that and some you can even die from one the thing that's even worse is that they they're not like the wasps like you know as long as you don't go up to them and bother them they're not going to bother you if they see you they're hunting you down until they kill you so that's kind of like a big and you know big motivation to not do that so that's why it kind of took her so much to decide on it because otherwise it'd be like oh sure why not you know so just keep in mind, I don't know if I mentioned that or not. I, I can't remember. But yeah, so I would ask you, would you risk that? You know, it's basically like swimming in swimming in the ocean with a shark to get to like something you need. Like a great white shark, not nonetheless, that's hungry. And you're covered in dead fish. <laughs> Painted red. Okay, I'm sorry. Alright. <laughs> um So uh after that, she starts going away, and it's kind of cool when the anthem goes on, she's actually using that to her advantage to cut down the branches, so that way it kind of covers the sound, but unfortunately, the anthem ends, and she's still cutting, the careers look up, they see what's going on, but it's too late, um, but also, the 
Tracker Jackers saw that what's going on too, and three, I think two or three of them actually stung Katniss. And like I said, it was like three or four that kill you. So right now she's in a critical state, and right now she's feeling like, you know, really, I can only imagine that feeling that, wow, I might die just doing this. And that's a, that's a bad way to go too. So, yeah, she does that, and she does manage to um, get it done before any more can uh, attack her. And when it gets down, this is where I talk about she's killing people. I mean, if, if, if those tracker jackers kill anybody, she's killing someone. It may not be direct, but I mean, I mean, if you throw a knife at someone's face just because you didn't literally kill them, the knife did. It's essentially a knife that she's throwing at someone's face, a tool she's using to kill somebody. So, um, yeah. Uh, so it's the first thing to do, the tracker jackers do, is they kill Glummer. And the girl from District 4. And I, I, this isn't sexist. It's just funny how it kills only the girls. I don't know. That's funny. But um, everyone else decides to run towards something. The lake is what Katniss figures. And it's kind of interesting. The lake must be closed or otherwise they wouldn't run for it. So it shows that she can counterattack at the camp maybe if she wanted to. Of where they're at. And she knows the general direction where they're at too. If she pays attention to where they're running. Um, so... Then, when she goes to Glimmer's body, and the reason why she decided to go there is because she had a bow and arrow, and I forgot to mention this too, uh, they actually tried to shoot Katniss with the bow and arrow, but they sucked, so she wasn't scared. And she realized that Glimmer had the bow and arrow, so that's why she was actually going for it. Um, um, so yeah, that's what she was doing. And then uh, she goes there, and then basically the the liquid from the little giant pimples explode all over Katniss and her she had to use a rock to break open Glimmer's fingers to get to the bow and basically that's a pretty intense scene you know she's breaking apart body pieces and she even rips off Glimmer's arms and the arms turn to like green shit and like that's the gruesome shit I'm talking about like just her whole body's being like decayed and like uh Katniss is like digging her hands into her stomach not her stomach but she's like digging into the flesh to get something and she starts hyperventilating and that's why and, and because of the poison in the tracker jackers from the tracker jackers but yeah she's very it's a very gr gross scene uh, and then of course the birds again give out that warning call I talked about earlier about how they I'm telling you that that the fact that the birds can do this is significant. The fact that they warn Katniss that morning's about to happen. The fact that they warn Katniss about the hovercrafts. I wonder if they're actually directly warning Katniss and Katniss is doing something to make them do that. That would be very interesting. Maybe it's just a random detail. Maybe it's just no it's no different than a rooster. You know, cock a doo to do the the early morning. But whatever. So then basically uh the hovercraft is what comes in and tries to get the body, but she tries to get the bow. And it's funny, Peta. They come back, you know, Peta and uh, Kato, to come, you know, supposedly kill Katniss. Um, but the thing is, Peta's like, "Holy shit, why are you still here?" Kind of thing. And Katniss is so surprised, like, "I can't, I can't understand it. She's, she just can't make sense of why someone would help him." And, and then basically that's what's happening. And then behind Peta, Kat, Kato is like, like raging like grabbing his sword and cutting through bushes and takes his spear ready to throw it at Katniss. Basically, like, he has a look on his face that means I'm going to fucking murder you. So that's got to be pretty intense, and I want to see that done in the movie. That's got to be... That would be... Ah, that would be suspenseful. But anyway, Peta is saying, like, something like, uh, you know, you need to run, 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 trying to uh, help him. But here's the thing that... uh kind of makes me reminds me of twilight so this is the ha let me just read this um uh his whole body starts to spark uh starts sparkling as if he's been dipped in dew um uh it maybe maybe actually shows that he they didn't go to the lake but they went somewhere else to get some things but i just think it's hysterical how he's sparkling like like edward that's hilarious i, I imagine that scene they're gonna make him be like hell oh, i'm a Peter, I'm sparkling. I'm ready to save you. You know, I don't know. That that to me is kind of corny, but whatever. So, um, 
Yeah, and then she basically running away. Um, I don't know if Peta fought off the cat guy, but and then um, she's running away. She starts hallucinating ants crawling into her eyes, and she's like so shocked that Peta actually saved her life. So anyway, that's pretty much the chapter, and I can't re- review chapter fifteen. Chapter fifteen is the last chapter I've read. So if I review chapter fifteen, that will be no more biased opinions of knowing what's going to happen next. But uh, I gotta say, this was a great chapter. Um, it reveals a lot, and it shows that Katniss is totally. I'd say she's willing to kill again. I, I can't remember if she said it in this chapter, or the next chapter, that she's totally willing to kill Kato. So, or Kato. Uh, um, that's inter- interesting. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any thoughts, disagree with what I say, let me know. And, um, yeah. All right. Goodbye. Have a good one.